My boss has told me I can reorganize the team. Where do I start? Often in our careers, we need to organize or in fact reorganize our teams. In the next two episodes, we're going to look at and explore this subject. In this episode, we're going to talk about seven things you should do before you start drawing your organization charts. Okay, number one, get to know the mission of your team. You'd be surprised how many people start their organization planning without real clarity as to what their mission is. If you don't know what you expect to deliver, how can you plan an organization to get there? Number two, get to know your customers. Now, that may not be the end customers, they may just be the people who you are producing deliverables for. What do they think about your organization? What do they think about how your organization should work or does work? And what is the relationship between your team and their team? Now, be careful not to listen to gossip, but they are the customer after all, and you need to make sure they're happy at the end of this organization change. Okay, number three, the deliverables of the team. Probably what you'll talk to the customer about is the deliverables. So once you know your mission, you need to be clear about what the deliverables or the outputs of your team are going to be. What are they expected to produce and often how often? Knowing this will help you decide how much resource needs to go where. Number four, get to know the team. So before moving people around, get to know as many of them as possible. Now, this will depend, of course, on the size of the team. So if you have 30 people or less, you might try and meet all of them uh, either individually or in sort of round tables. If you have more than 30, then you're going to have to rely on the managers in that team to help you. Okay, number five, get to know your bench strength. So those managers, uh, that's your leadership team. Who's the best manager? Who's the most experienced? who might be able to take over for you, uh, who might be your successor. You're really going to need to think about and understand the qualities and capabilities of that leadership team. Now, is one of them an informal leader of the group? Is that good or is that bad? These are questions you should start asking yourself about the leadership team. Number six, get to know your HR rules. Look, many companies have rules about things like span and control or how many people can report to people. Typically, I believe a first line manager should probably have between seven and 15 people. Of course, in a production line or in a large development shop, that might be a different, but typically in the professional uh, world, that's about the right number. A second line manager may have five people, but look, your organization may have very clear rules and they have very, may have very clear assumptions on these, and you should know what those are before you start drawing. And number seven, finally, talk to your boss. Now, I'm not saying you should go to your boss and ask him how you should organize, but you should have a sense of their expectations and their requirements. You know, I bet your boss has a pretty good view on what they think makes up a good organization design. Sounds to me like that's a pretty good thing to know before you start drawing one. Okay, here's the bottom line. Like most things, if you get the planning right done up front, the rest of the job will be easy. If you start before planning, then plan to start again many times.